Hello, good morning, good afternoon. I'm so excited. It's a bright and sunny day. The perfect day that you just want to listen to music and meal prep in your kitchen, or at least for me. So uh, I'm Katherine Kellogg. Uh, welcome to the Going Zero Waste YouTube channel. Today we're going to be talking all about meal prepping. If you would please give this video a thumbs up, it really helps my videos with the YouTube algorithm. So let's talk about meal prepping. I have been meal prepping slash meal planning for about... Mm, I don't know, maybe a little bit over six years and I've learned a lot along the way. So I wanted to share my secrets with you because I found that meal prepping and meal planning really tends to often fail because if you write down you're gonna eat lasagna on Tuesday, for some reason, whenever Tuesday rolls around, the absolute last thing in the entire world that you want to eat is lasagna, right? It happens every time. So let's talk about better ways to meal prep and meal plan. Now, one of the things that I find to be really, really consistent for me, breakfast and lunch. I can eat a sandwich every single day and be happy. In fact, from elementary to graduating high school, I had the exact same lunch every single day. Peanut butter and jelly sandwich with chips. I could be thrilled eating a sandwich and chips every single day. And I've really just like weaned into that. There's no reason I have to have fancy breakfast and fancy lunches. I just need things that are going to keep me full, keep me happy, and are gonna be easy to grab and reach. So know what you like to eat and don't be afraid of prepping those things. My next tip for prepping is not to, is, is to think about ingredients rather than meals. So what I personally like to do is I just like to get my fruits and vegetables chopped, ready, prepared, something that you're going to be able to grab and go and assemble. And I find that works so much better than prepping meals because once again, when Tuesday rolls around, you're not going to be in the mood for lasagna. You're just not. And if you are by some miracle, you're a magical human and congratulations, you've succeeded, you've excelled where so many of us have failed and that's amazing and I'm so happy for you. But if you're like me, then prepping ingredients is definitely the way to go. It can be something as simple as literally chopping your bell peppers. When you get home from the grocery store or on a beautiful Sunday, doing something like chopping your bell peppers, chopping your carrots. I like to create snacks, breakfast, and then a protein for myself. I recently been making seitan and I love it. So we're gonna do that today. So for snacks this week, I've got um, brownie bite bliss balls, which I already have some left over from the following week. I'm gonna make some hummus and have some carrot sticks and red bell pepper sticks ready to go. And I'm also going to be prepping some seitan and my breakfast in the morning. So having breakfast prepped has honestly changed my life. I've been creating really, really high protein yogurts. It's yogurt that contains protein powder. It contains flax seeds, chia seeds, oatmeal, and you mix it all together. And I put them in single serving cups, just, you know, individual little mason jars and upcycled jars that I have. So that way in the morning, they're ready to go. I can grab some berries, wash those and know that I'm getting fruit and tons of protein and fiber to start my day. So I'm feeling really full and satisfied because if I don't do this, then what I do is just not eat until 2 p.m. And then I'm grumpy and I'm tired and like my body is upset at me because it wants to know why it hasn't been fed in multiple hours. And then I wind up making really poor food choices and wind up eating um, like seven cups of popcorn before bed, right? And so uh, I just know that about myself. And so instead making sure I'm prepared for the morning when I wake up is always just a really, really great way to make sure I'm being fed and I'm happy and have energy uh, to go about doing all of my work. Another way to cook more intuitively is to think about flavor profile rather than dishes. When you're thinking about your spices and what you can combine in order to create flavor profiles that you really enjoy, you're going to have complete and total freedom. This allows you to cook with whatever is in season from ingredient up rather than recipe down. What are the flavor profiles we like to eat and organizing by flavor profile? And this means that we're able to make sure we have the right spices for creating those dishes and we can be flexible with what's in season. And my last tip is to make sure that you have different sections prepped. 
you already know that I like to have breakfast and snacks. But even beyond that, thinking about the carbohydrate, the protein, the fat, the vegetables, what all are the building blocks of a meal? So now I'm currently making my big protein for the week, which is going to be some seitan. Um, but I might prep lentils and beans or legumes. As far as carbohydrates, I might bake some potatoes or sweet potatoes, rice, quinoa. And then of course, roasting some vegetables or at least getting those sliced. So I'm able to easily assemble meals and get plant-based, low-waste meals on the table very, very quickly. So I like to ask myself, what's uh, my carbohydrate, uh, what is my fat, and what is my protein? And making sure that all three of those categories have been met in that dish, so that way I feel full and satisfied. It also gives me greater flexibility since my husband's an omnivore and I'm mostly an herbivore. And these are my best tips for making sure that you're set up for a great week of eating low waste and plant-based because honestly, I know many of us are buying a lot more food in packaging. It's just the way, of the, it's just the name of the game right now. All of the bulk bins at my local grocery store have been removed. And then even if they were there, the likely chance I'd be allowed to bring my own container right now is so incredibly slim. And I actually love this because even with me getting 95% of my groceries or maybe 80% 80, 80 of my groceries and packaging, I'm still sticking to a mostly like whole foods plant-based diet. And that is one of the best ways to have an impact on the environment. There was a study that was done, I believe uh, there's an article about it in the New York Times, where they found that if you wanted, you, if you were comparing two people and one friend wanted to go vegetarian and the other one just wanted to reduce all of their packaging waste, it would take 11 years for the person who's reducing their packaging waste to reduce the same amount of emissions as the one person who's eating a vegetarian diet for a whole year. And so I think that's one of the kind of big flaws about zero waste living is if you get really, really caught up in the technical definition of not sending anything to a landfill, which is kind of unrealistic, then you are missing a bigger picture. So instead, when I look at waste, I prefer to think of waste in, in a more holistic sense. You can have a waste of time, a waste of energy, a waste of resources. So it's mostly just about do, reducing waste across the board, not necessarily narrowing down into what exactly is being thrown away in your trash can. And by accepting more packaging into my life, I realize I still don't take the trash out that often. We take out the trash maybe, maybe once a month, probably closer to every six weeks, and our trash can is this big. So yeah, we have some food packaging, but in the grand scheme of things, Right? And like, I personally would much rather focus on the sustainability and the sourcing of my products than what is, and then, then their packaging, right? For me, I'd much rather have something that was regenerative and USDA organic and fair trade and things that are focusing on and support sustainable farming is gonna be more important to me than a small piece of plastic. Of course, plastic waste is absolutely a huge issue when it comes to our oceans and affecting our local environments and ecosystems. Of course, it's a huge problem, but I think that we can call for change on a larger level and be asking businesses for them to reduce their packaging waste and demanding policies and creating refill and sustainable ways for everyone to reduce their waste rather than focusing on a few of us who individually can use our bulk bins. I feel like this is getting kind of tangenty and maybe it should be a completely different video, but this video is about meal prepping, um, but we've kind of talked about food in general and let's get to it. Let's prep some food. The big protein I prepped is seitan, which is made from vital wheat gluten. It's super high in protein, low in fat. It's a great as a meat substitute. And as you can see, it even looks kind of meaty. My carrots were a little past their prime, so I'm using them to make a vegetable stock with celery. I'm gonna pick the celery pieces out and then blend all the carrots to make a yummy carrot soup. I chop my peppers so I can grab these for a stir fry, for fajitas, or for snacking on my homemade hummus. And I prepped five of these little protein yogurts that I'm gonna be able to have for breakfast. I just like to add berries with these in the morning and I'm good to go. So currently I have some rice as my grain prepped. I've got my snacks, I've got my protein, I've got my brownie bite bliss balls, I've got peppers chopped, veggie stock to make more rice or quinoa throughout the week, my carrot soup, and I even made a little bit of homemade salad dressing. This only took me about two hours and it's gonna save me a ton of time throughout the week, especially when I'm feeling super busy. 
Thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. Please give it a thumbs up and press that big red subscribe button to be notified when new videos are coming out. And I will see you next week with a new video. Bye.